Hi, I heard your car has a flat tire. No? Well, it has now. Now, a regular peasant uses soapy water to see where it bubbles and find the... Uh, there, find the puncture hole. While a real alpha pulls out a fluke acoustic imager out of his deep pockets to look for and see the noise of the air escaping from the puncture hole. This device can measure between 2 kilo to 100 kilohertz even from this far, a noise that is not even audible, around 30 kilohertz, and you can easily find a leakage in your tire right there. I guess we fix this now. It's right around there, it seems. Here we go. Look at the noise it's giving out now. Wow, this environment is quite noisy. It's fascinating that you can see things in such a noisy environment. Inflate. Oh man, everything makes so much noise in outside our audible frequency. I feel sorry for the bats and dogs and cats. No hissing from the tire anymore. Or you can look inside a car's engine and get a profile of all the noise and vibrations coming from your car engine, perhaps in unwanted frequencies too, and find a potential failure location. Boy, am I happy that in my continuous attempt at getting cool tools, I was able to get Fluke to sponsor me. <laughs> I mean, if you do engineering, you know Fluke. See, it has a regular camera in the middle and an array of 64 microphones to measure the frequency, intensity and location of the sound. I was just using it around the office to see noise. That? That's why one of the main uses of this thing in the industry is to find gas leaks that you can't easily see or hear. This can hear things that you cannot. Mm. Actually, let's give it another try. I have a gas stove. If I turn on the gas and look at it, see this bar on the right is like a spectrum analyzer measuring and showing signals up to 100 kilohertz. And this slider is a filter basically that you can use to filter all the noise and only focus on the frequencies you want to see. And this slider changes the limits and sensitivity. It can easily see the gas leak from so far. And if I turn off the gas, of course it turns off. And if I turn it back on, If the gas has been running without burning, make sure it dissipates first before trying to turn it on. Open windows and doors and let it out. It is heavier than air, so if you lie on the ground, you will drown in it and suffocate. It smells bad, so you specifically know it has been running and be careful. Avoid any flames and sparks in that situation. Call experts to help you out. Stand tall above the sea of gas so you can breathe. Run away. You get the point. Imagine you are in a noisy factory with a ton of pressurized pipes running everywhere and some of them are leaking gas and there is no easy way to find them. With this thing, you can filter through all the noise and see the ultrasounds coming from the gas leaks. In fact, well here, I came to a construction site. Oh, well, there's too much noise here, let's see. Well, we closed our gas lines, but I'm trying to see if there is any leakage coming from these pipes. Well, the guys are digging something back there and it's making so much noise. Okay, okay. Oh, there seems to be nothing. Damn it. Oh, no wonder. They disconnected the gas pipe here. It's just floating. There is something suspicious. What is that? that is there something leaking from that corner? Oh, damn it. Yeah, I've, I sense something very faint. It's leaking very slightly. Oh my God, this device can see it. <laughs> there is a tiny bit of leak right here and that's just its reflection from the wall coming back to the sensors. Oh man, I can only imagine all of us have a tiny bit of leakage in all our houses. <laughs> This inspires me to make some sort of acoustic display. That's why I bought a bunch of ultrasonic transmitters and 
I'll show you at the end if I can make it. You know what's funny? This thing has 64 microphones and yet they haven't used a single one of those to add an audio track for its video recording. So I had to add my own fake audio on those. Nothing a software update can't fix. Please. The way this works is, imagine you have a sound source somewhere in space that sends signals equally in all directions. But, because of the distance between the microphones on this thing, that same sound reaches different microphones at a bit of different delay which results in a phase difference between the signals every microphone receives. That, combined with the amplitude of the signal and the directionality of the microphones, gives this device an idea of where that sound source is in space. In fact, Steve Mould made a great video about the science of how something like this works a while back, so I don't have to go through the details with you. I just want to use this device. Something I realized scanning around the office was this. Look at this noise. It's coming from the power supply of my computer and as you can see it's somewhere between 20 to 30 kilohertz i bet it's either some inductor or transformer or some ceramic capacitor vibrating at that frequency and that one on the ground is just its reflection because if i simply place my foot between them and block the sound that one on the ground goes away. Which makes me think, do you know how many times there was some component buzzing and vibrating on our electronic boards and we couldn't figure out where it's coming from because there was so many of them? With this, we could just look at the board and see where it was coming from. I'm also thinking some electronic components could vibrate at frequencies that you could never hear but could cause future mechanical failures. And this thing can show them to you. Let me dig into my lab power supply. Okay, let's turn it on and look at it. Oh, there are some things vibrating. Is that, that's a transformer. It seems like it's vibrating at quite a wide band between 15 kilohertz to 35 kilohertz. I should be able to hear the 15 kilohertz part of it. Yeah, I can definitely hear that. <laughs> what is the rest? Might just be reflections of the source. Let me load it. I just set the outputs to maximum and short the output. Stop it. There you go. Running 10 amps. It's already making some crickly crackety sounds. Oh man, this is vibrating now. Let's limit the band. Seems like it's mainly that transformer there killing itself. Let's just turn it off. Ooh, what was that? Hey, what is that? Spike there. Oh my god. <laughs> and there are stuff even at higher frequencies. That transformer is buzzing in all frequencies. I do wonder if such powerful high frequency noises will affect dogs and cats and bats in like some negative way. Maybe I should bring some animals in and test it on them. Well, if you have animals at home, maybe turn on your power supplies beside them and see if they run away. Film it and post it on my subreddit. Can I please ask for another software update? Right now it is such that if I'm recording video with it and instead of stopping the recording, I shut it down, it loses that last video recording. I've lost some videos like that. Can we make it such that if in the middle of video recording I try to shut it down, it saves that last video first, then shuts down, please? Oh wait, this thing should be able to show me where a corona discharge is happening on a high voltage system by hearing its location. Here's my Van de Graaff generator. Let's see what the device hears. If I bring my finger close. Oh, oh look at that. Now the tip of my finger is making the sound and it's reflection from the glow and wall, I guess. At the tip of my finger, we have corona discharge. So imagine with this thing in power plants or high voltage power lines, I can clearly see where the corona discharge is coming from. Do you know how much power these corona discharges can waste and avoiding them is such an advantage. We can find their location and put a ball on it. Oh, ow, 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 that's a real discharge, we don't want that. Just the corona discharge. Prevent it. In fact, with this device, I can rebuild my Marx generator and pinpoint the location of those stupid pesky corona discharges that waste power and lower my voltage. And that way, maximize my output voltage. <laughs>
Uh, do you think I should rebuild my Marx generator? Let me know in the comments. Shink ultrasound is so cool. In fact, let me do something. Let's try this. I have an ultrasonic transmitter connected to 40 kilohertz coming from my function generator. Let's look at it and see what we see. Right now I don't see anything because despite the fact that I have a 40 kilohertz spike, my slider is not on that frequency. If I move on it, bang! <laughs> look at that. It's well, I can adjust the level here. What is the fluff around the microphone? I don't think these are standing waves. I think this happens due to the fact that the wavelength of the 40 kHz signal is slightly less than a centimeter while these microphones are spaced a bit over a centimeter. So the same phase difference can repeat multiple times. But we can get rid of them changing the level. And there you go, nice and clean. The microphone seems to be pretty directional. If I move to the side, I don't see it anymore. <laughs> I can see it all the way from back here and I can see its reflection in the glass. <laughs> so I built this. I slapped some ultrasonic transmitters on a cardboard box with an Arduino and a bunch of transistors and resistors and just wired them together. Let's see what we see. I just stick it over here and look at it. Let's increase the sensitivity and see what it looks like. Oh. <laughs> Look at this! I made a seven segment ultrasonic display. <laughs> you see all the interferences around the environment too. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful or not? Uh, are you wondering what we can do with this? Perhaps we can teach the bats how to count, like the Count Dracula. One, <laughs> four. <laughs> Uh, it does look kind of useless, but I don't know. It's an art piece, okay? I mean, have you ever seen anywhere in the world that numbers are shown with sound? I'm the first. I'm gonna patent this. Of course, this wasn't easy to make. You know, those transmitters transmit at 40 kilohertz and having them on all at the same time made so much standing waves and interference and bubbles and messes on the screen that nothing was visible. So I had to modulate them and turn them on and off at 15 kilohertz to make the single spike of 40 kilohertz into such a wide band audio transmission. And I had to turn those segments on one at a time to minimize those interferences to make it as clear as it is. And for what? I don't know. It's an art piece, like I said. Maybe one of you can make a good use out of it. <laughs> this device has some cool technology in it. Although the price tag is not for the faint of heart, you have to be a big company or a YouTuber to have it. <laughs> but I'm sure the benefits you'll get out of it will pay for itself. <laughs> Thank you for watching.